Verbalizer tends to overgeneralize. Verbalizer tends to overgeneralize, to overgeneralize. was an interesting study where high school students that came like for school specializing in the arts, sciences, and another one especially in the humanities, there was teams of students and their assignment was to create a new planet. So the art students heavily visualizing, they made a planet with uh, crystals on it. Another one made a skyscraper planet. And then the more mathematical science students made a round ball and described the gravity and the uh, atmosphere you know, kind of boring pictures. And the verbal thinkers started to write it down. And then they go, oh, wait a minute, we're supposed to draw the planet. So they made kind of splotchy stuff on it. The art minds and the mathematical minds, they had big planning sessions on how to design their planet. Where the verbal thinkers, um, they didn't do any planning. The verbal thinker would get big, broad concepts to overgeneralize. Big, broad concepts of something we need to do. Right. But how do you actually implement those concepts. Yeah, right. There's right. no detail there because the verbalizer tends to overgeneralize. Big, broad concepts to overgeneralize. They didn't do any planning. There's right. no detail there. Engineers, very good at rank ordering practical priorities. I'm not interested in the politics. I would just rank the power stations on expensiveness and difficulty to winterize. Rank ordering practical priorities. I would just rank the power stations. Rank ordering practical priorities. Practical priorities. I have this company, my business partner is an engineer, and he knows the systems at every level of their machine instantiation. If anything ever goes wrong, he knows exactly what goes wrong. Say exactly right. what piece of equipment froze. He knows exactly what goes wrong and he knows exactly how to fix it. It's particularized down to the point where it, that makes action possible, eh? Particularized action, particularized action. And that's part of the problem with, with the verbal abstraction. It's like a pseudo-knowledge, pseudo-knowledge, because it sounds like you've got the picture right. But when you actually try to implement it, you find out that it's really a, a hollow shell. It's like a pseudo-knowledge, a hollow shell. Pseudo-knowledge, a hollow shell, a hollow shell. If I want to get accurate information. I don't, you don't talk to the managers. You got to get down in the shop. You got to get down in the shop. When we get rid of all the suits, it's going to be the managers right. and the verbal thinkers. They won't talk in front of suits. They're afraid they're going to lose their jobs. And then they'll take you out there and show you what froze. So they have this extremely detailed knowledge. They bring that knowledge up the abstraction hierarchy is pointing out their hypothetical well, superiors that's the problem. lack of detailed and knowledge. Pointing out problem. lack of detailed and knowledge. A, pointing out they're worried about losing their jobs. But you really want to solve the problem, they need to be able to talk to you freely because they're the ones that yeah. will tell you exactly what froze. Why is there this gap, this psychological gap between the practical and the abstract? You see, before it was right. all an abstraction, spreadsheets, numbers. But when they came out of the office and they saw something bad, now it was real. Now they had to act. Now it was real. Now they had to act. It was no longer abstract anymore. There seems to be a kind of pride in that abstraction, ones who think primarily in words tend to be rather dismissive of the intelligence of more practical people, like working people. So once you build up hierarchical organizations, it's very easy for the people who are operating near the top of the abstraction chain not to pay attention to the details. And we could fall prey to the psychological tendency to just dismiss all that, not to pay attention to the details, the details. Because the verbalizer tends to overgeneralize. It's like a pseudo-knowledge. To overgeneralize. They didn't do any planning. A hollow shell. Pseudo-knowledge. You see, this is the problem. The verbal thinker will get big, broad concepts. Pseudo-knowledge. Big, broad concepts of something we need to do. But how do you actually implement those concepts. Rank ordering the details. It's particularized down to the point that makes action possible. Planning. The details. Planning. 